gold here. And today we're going to look at, we're going to begin a series on conditional branches. And one of the first ones we're going to focus on is the if statement in its simplest form. We're going to do a few videos on the if statement because this statement can get very complex if we decide to make it that way. And in some situations, it does have to be a very complex situation or a very complex statement to accomplish the task that we're trying to accomplish. With the if statement, I can basically evaluate one set of conditions and have the robot perform a specific set of actions or i can evaluate multiple conditions having the robot perform different sets of actions so the first thing i'm going to do is go to the abb main menu and into the program editor now i can see that here is the routine that i want but what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a feature called pp to routine program pointer to routine and the reason i'm going to use that is because i look at this screen right here and I do not see my program pointer. If it is not there, then I cannot run this program. So I'm gonna use the debug option at the bottom and I'm gonna select PP for program pointer to routine. This is gonna take my program pointer into the routine that I select. So when I click it, here's routine one. I'm gonna click it and now we see my arrow. All right, so what I've done here is I've basically started this program off with a home position as we can see an absolute joint move to the home position and we're going to talk later about the difference between absolute joint and joint and all the different motion types i'm just trying to cover a bunch of little things that uh, help us out and then we're going to get deeper into every aspect of the lines of code all right but let's look at how we set this up the if statement in itself is very simple so i'm just going to put a couple of lines of code in here so it it actually just looks like something so now i've got two motions Basically, the if statement is going to allow the robot to either complete the program or branch off in a different direction and then come back and complete the program. And we're going to look at how to set it up in the simplest form. So next, I'm going to add a couple more motions in here just to make it, you know, look normal or look like a regular program. All right, so let's add a few more in. All right, so I've got a series of motions in here. And what I want to do is after this linear motion, after this linear motion, I want to use the if statement to give the robot the ability to branch off into another program if a condition is met. So let's look at how to input that statement. I'm going to go to my add instruction button and you'll find it under common. It'll also be under program flow. It's under a couple of menus. Remember, a lot of these instructions are under more than one of these menus in here. I'm going to go ahead and select if. And when I select if, it's going to take me to this screen right here. Now, if is going to default to the Boolean data type. So every time I select if in the argument screen it takes me to right here, it's going to be the Boolean data type. And we can tell that pretty easy because we see true and false right there. So that tells us it's Boolean. And if you're working with Boolean, that's great. It's right here. I can go ahead and set or build my condition. But I don't want to use Boolean. I want to rely on the signal of a digital input here. So I'm going to do that by pressing this change data type button at the bottom. When I select this button, it's going to bring up a list of all of the different data types that the if statement recognizes and I can incorporate into that if statement. And as we can see, this is a pretty large list and I'm going to show you how large. If I look at all the different data types here, if I go under ABB program data and I look at all data types, I see that it's pretty much the same list. Is what we just saw and what that tells us is that the if statement the if statement is capable of working with every different type of data on the system so I can set this up it's, it's almost an endless amount of ways that we can set this up and sometimes that's what makes logic so confusing is because it can do so much but most of the time we use it for much simpler means than trying to incorporate a lot of different conditions into just one simple statement. Sometimes we use it simple like we're going to do here. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to find my signals. Signal DI inputs. So I'm going to select that data type and hit OK. Now, I've got one signal here, signal DI1, one I created a little while ago. All right, so I want the robot to evaluate this condition. Once it executes that linear move, I want it to look at input one here. And if input one is on, then I want it to go into another routine called maintenance position. So I'm going to do a procedure call that we covered in one of the earlier videos. So in this case, I'm going to select signal DI. 
and I'm going to hit OK. But now when I look at this, this isn't right. If signal DI, then execute this statement. So basically what the if statement is saying is if this condition occurs, then execute this set of actions. But when we look at signal DI1 here, it's not specifying a state. So I'm just saying, basically, if signal DI1, then do this. But I'm not telling the robot what it's looking for with that signal. So I have to build a condition. And to build a condition, I've got my signal DI up here. I'm going to hit the plus button over here. Plus. And I get my mathematical operators. And if you scroll down, you'll also see some Boolean operators. Now here, I'm going to select equals because it's a digital input. It only makes sense, and from a logical standpoint, I can only use equals. So signal DI1, being a digital input, can only equal zero or one. It can only be on or off. It can't be halfway in between or in a third position. So I'm going to say if signal DI1 equals, if I go to new here, and I type in a one here, watch what happens. I get an error. Once again, remember my actual values. I can't use the new button. The new button is for naming things. It's for creating new, in this case, like registers or variables. But I do not want to use that. I want to say if signal DI equals 1. So I have to do that by isolating my expression. I'm going to hit edit. Only selected. Now I'm going to type in 1. Hit OK. And now it accepted it. So I'm going to hit OK again. And now I've got my condition built. If input 1 equals 1, then do whatever I tell it to do right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my statement. Your statement is your SMT is for statement. And your statement is your set of actions that you want the robot to perform if that condition is met and only if that condition is met. Remember, the if statement is a conditional branch. So it will not do what I put in this statement in this statement line here. It will not do it unless this condition is met. So when the robot gets to this line of code, it's going to see this if. So it's going to look at input 1. It's going to look at signal DI 1. And it's going to see, is it 0 or 1? If it's a 1, then it's going to execute the set of actions I have in the statement block. Otherwise, if signal input 1 is not 1, if it's actually a 0, then it will ignore the if statement, end it, and finish the rest of the code. A conditional branch. This is the way we build in a condition to make this set of statements only happen only when that condition occurs. So I'm going to add in a procedure call. Actually, I'm going to show that we can put more than one thing in there. So I'm going to do just a, a simple little set under my inputs and outputs. I'm just going to set, uh, let's create an output there. Now, that's not the correct way to create an output. I just want to say that. All right, so if signal DI1 equals 1, then it will set signal DO1 high. So it will send that output high. Then I want it to do a procedure call. So I'm going to go back to common here, and I'm going to pick what's called my proc call. People tend to call that pro call a lot. It's not as proc call for procedure call. And I want it to run the maintenance position routine. I'm going to put that below. And there we go. Now we have our if statement, our conditional branch. It's called a conditional branch because it only executes the actions if the condition is fully met. Now I could have combined that. I could have said if input one and input two. Uh, you know, you can get really crazy with these statements. You can get a, You can really make them very complex if you want to. It's one of the most powerful statements, in my opinion, because it's so flexible. I can do everything from test case simulations or, you know, replace the test case with this. I can do a lot of different things with the if statement. I can basically make the robot do anything I need it to do under a specific set of conditions. So the if statement. I'm going to delete it and let's run through the setup again. So I'm going to delete the if statement. And now I want to put another if statement. I'm going to put the same one here, but we're just going to run through the process of setting it up again. So I am put my cursor on the line where I want to put the if statement. I want the if statement to go below this line. So I put my cursor there. So I'm going to select if, and it's going to take me to my argument screen. We know it's going to default to the Boolean data type. Always does, so I'm going to change my data type. 
And I'm going to go down until I see signal DI in this case. Until I find it. And it's up a little bit more. Signal DI. I hit OK. And it will take me to this argument screen. Now remember, we have to build a condition. So I'm going to select signal DI. And then I'm going to use my mathematical operators with the plus sign here. I'll say equals. I know I cannot use new for values. One is a number in this case, so I can't use new. It's going to give me an error. I have to edit only selected one. Now I could say zero. I could say if input one is zero, and let's do it that way this time. I hit OK. So now what we see is if input one is zero, then it will execute these actions. But if input one is not zero, it ignores this statement and runs the rest of the code. So let's go ahead and put our procedure call in there. Now notice the difference here. When I tap on the expression, it takes me to an argument screen. When I tap on a statement, it doesn't take me anywhere. I can only add instructions on a statement block. It doesn't take me to my argument screen. So I'm just going to do a simple procedure call to the maintenance position. And there we go. So what this is going to do here when the robot looks at this and reads this code, it's going to start at home, make a joint move to this position, make a joint mo or linear move to this position. Then it's going to check this input because it reads, if input one is zero, then do or go to the maintenance position or execute that procedure. And if, in, if it is low, then what will happen is it'll say if input one equals zero, it looks at input one, and let's say it is zero. So it is zero, then it will go to the maintenance position and then it will execute the rest of the program. So if I wanted it to stop after the maintenance position and wait there, I would probably use a stop or an exit after that, after this line of code right here. But we'll talk more about those as we cover those instructions and start adding those into things like this. So this is the if statement in its simplest form. If this condition occurs, then execute this set of actions in the if run the rest of the program. Well, hopefully that helps. Uh, we're going to be looking later at how to go to our optional arguments and add in else and else if to build a complex set of conditions. And we'll be combining conditions and executing multiple statements. But I wanted to just cover the basics of the if statement before we got into the uh, higher level functions of it. I hope the video helps somebody out. Um, thanks a lot for watching. For now, gold out.